Good morning. I'm Aya Wimala. Today I got onto the Blue Lotus Temple uh, Facebook page easily, so I hope you haven't been uh, thinking you're going to have to jump around too many, too many times. So today is beautiful here, still noisy outside, so uh, they're still finishing up asphalting a drive, a parking lot, and uh, I'm I'm trying to just let the noise be a teacher, and it's it's worked pretty well. It hasn't been bothersome, but I do keep the door close, the at my patio door closed most of the time. But I think they'll be through today, and we'll have the rewards of a new new asphalt. So uh, I just I just read on Facebook about uh, a monastic sister, Aya Yeshe, and uh, it, it was very moving. I'm going to share it if you don't if uh, if you're not if she isn't a friend of yours. But she just had a very difficult diagnosis of a, a non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. And so she's just reflecting on that and letting people know and uh, voicing some of her uh, some of her feelings about it. So it was very moving to read that. And it's it's not all it's not all positive. I mean, she's dealing with it, and it's a very slow slow moving cancer. Her father died of the same thing, and she feels like she has many many, many good years ahead of her, but um, it's also some of her criticisms of the patriarchy and Buddhism, and she's been vocal about that in the past. Um, and she actually ordained, she was a Tibetan nun for many years, and then did ordain as a Theravada nun because she felt there was less of that less of the patriarchy affecting especially women monastics. But she's done a lot of wonderful work and she also has ways, things that she would like to see people do instead of just, she said, sending thoughts and good wishes. That, that's fine, that's wonderful, but, they, but she listed some specific things people can do, uh, some actions people can do to show their to show their care and concern. And I thought she had beautiful, she's made beautiful suggestions. And uh, I, I'm gonna be following up on some of them for sure. She's in Australia. She recently built, uh, uh, finally built a, a, a bought, was able to buy some property in Tasmania. So uh, far away, but she's, uh, she has a presence in the world. So that, I think it threw me a little bit. So today we have, and interesting, we've been reading in our uh, commentary for the uh, Buddhist pilgrimage in India by Ken and Visaka Kawasaki. They've edited it, so they've They've grouped the teachings of the Buddha, and now we're reading the 35-day uh, reflection, reading and reflection for each day of a 35-day pilgrimage. And then the, the first part of the book are lots of full suttas about uh, that you could follow with the suttas as you go through the pilgrimage. <clears throat> and lately, we certainly, because we're getting to the part of a lot have uh, meditations on death because the Buddha, the Buddha's life, you know, is continuing. So he's, uh, we, we go from his birth to the place of his death and final enlightenment. <clears throat> so he's teaching, teaching us all the way. So we read, I think yesterday we read uh, the simile of the six animals, that's right. And the reflection yesterday was called 
uh, be familiar with death. But today, day 17, the reading is Grasping and Worry, and it's very short. And the reflection is called The Mountains. So we can read this together and then we can spend some time sitting together. Day 17, reading, grasping, and worry. <clears throat> what is grasping and worry? An ordinary person thinks, this body is mine. I am this. This is myself. Then when the body changes, grief, suffering, and despair arise. It is the same with feelings, perception, mental formations, and consciousness. Those are the five aggregates, the body, feelings, perception, mental formations, and consciousness. So we call those the five aggregates, the five components of what make up this, this package. What is freedom from grasping and worry? An instructed noble, <clears throat> excuse me, the allergies, are, seasonal allergies are uh, very strong at this time here in Illinois. What is freedom from grasping and worry? An instructed noble disciple thinks, this body is not mine, I am not this, this is not myself. Then, even though the body changes, grief, suffering, and despair do not arise. It is the same with feelings, perception, mental formations, and consciousness. Some Yuta Nikaya 22.7. So when we do study the five aggregates, we know that these are, these are all the components of what we often think of as our self. We identify with it, but all, all conditioned things are made up of these aggregates, and these aggregates are then, all of the aggregates, all of the parts of ourselves are um, conditioned. They're temporary. They rise and they fall away. So this is a very short reading, but it's a very important part of the Buddha's teachings. So it's something, as we all approach death, which we all are, um, this is something we think about a lot, and that's grasping and worry, because we're always trying to grasp at, this is me, this is myself, and we're always worried about the future, uh, grasping at things and worrying. When the body changes, grief, suffering, and despair arise. And it's the same with all the other aggregates. Our feelings, our perception, our mental formations, and our consciousness. So we can stop worrying and stop grasping when we when we're able to see this is not me, this is not mine. I am not this. So now let's read the reflection. You can be in your meditation posture and just close your eyes and listen and let this just, uh, let what I'm reading from the Samyutta, Samyutta Nikaya 325, you can just let this reading uh, be in your head when you begin your meditation. Just be being with your breath and just listening. The mountains. Like gigantic boulders, mountains reaching to the sky, moving in from the four directions and crushing all in their path. In the same way, aging and death roll over living beings. Noble warriors, priests, merchants, workers, outcasts, and scavengers. These mountains spare no one. 
they trample everyone. Here elephants can hold no ground, neither can chariots, infantry, a battle of spells, nor wealth win out. Thus, a wise person, seeing their own good, establishes firm conviction in the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Sangha. One who practices the Dhamma in word, in thought, word, and deed, receives praise here on earth, and after death rejoices in heaven. So again, we're looking at, uh, you know, it's very clear that part of, part of, uh, it's a, it's a huge part of our life uh, is contemplating death and how we relate to it. And I think the Buddha's teachings are very clear about it. We are impermanent, and so that's what we're working with all the time. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of worry and grasping. People grasp at things to, I think, to... Uh, hang on, they're really hanging on to life. They may feel like they've got to do everything, buy everything, see everything, have everything. Um, and somehow, I don't know if that's a life extension uh, solution or just that while they're alive, they need to do everything they can possibly. Uh, maybe better sometimes to slow down and have more awareness about what's going on and what we're doing. So let's sit. You can just ponder this or just let it, let it uh, float around in your head for a while. So be with your body. Really be in this body. We know this body is impermanent but this is where we live in this lifetime. Everything we need to know is here. Be aware of the body breathing. Feel gratitude to this body. It's temporary, so are we. Just be with your breath. Allow it to sustain you. If you want to begin with a few deep breaths in and out, that can help you settle into your body if, you're, if you feel like you're uh, not quite here. And it can help you become centered and then, then it's, it may help you be present in the body. And as Bhikkhu Bodhi says, as your body calms down, it becomes more tranquil, and your body becomes more at ease, then feel your mind drop down into your body. Sometimes we separate them That mind is part of who we are. It's one of our senses. So let it fall and feel it come into the rest of your body. You may want to be aware of how the reading affected you. Is there some feeling that you notice arising? It may be uncomfortable. There may be a little bit of fear. Maybe you have a feeling of, um, or a thought, 
Why is this always about death? Why do I why are we supposed to be thinking about death all the time? So you may be irritated. Just be aware of what your body's telling you, what your response is. And if you can just sit with that response, be able to see it clearly. To recognize it and then just be able to accept, accept that reaction, whether it seems positive or negative. That's, we're loading things when we, when we give them those distinctions. But just see it, just see it as that's my reaction to this talk about death. Breathe into it. Just explore it, investigate it a bit. You can ask yourself, why worry? Why grasp? And when you feel that you've done that acceptance and recognition and you've investigated a little bit, you can just allow it to pass away. Just come back to your nurturing self. practice is not to obsess on death. It's only to understand death, to recognize it, to see it, and to understand how the Buddha's teachings relate to it. And it's not pessimistically, it's just with clarity.
your mind has become distracted, just come back to your breath. Breathe in with gratitude. And you can breathe out gratitude as well. Gratitude for our lives. Gratitude for understanding the realities of this world and accepting the truths we find in the world. Gratitude for family and friends, especially noble friends. I think it's really important to feel gratitude for any abundance we have in life. So many don't do not have abundance. As we end our practice, and hopefully you can continue on longer, but as we end our time together, may all of us find joy and happiness in our lives, in our moments, and may everything we do or say or think be done for our benefit and also for the benefit of all other beings. Thank you for being such an important part to my practice. Have a, have a lovely day and uh, be mindful. Just be Try to be present, try to be uh, encouraging, try to be grateful. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.